Hey everybody, this is Terry Rice at for Foundry, and for this workflow, we're going to go ahead and create a nice column of smoke using Nuke's particle system. Uh, so for this video, uh, I'm going to be playing through the simulation. Now, when you're creating a simulation at some point, as you have a heavy simulation, you definitely want to create a flip book on this so you can play it back and make sure that you're seeing it at the correct frame rate at all times so you can judge the speed of the simulation. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm going to go ahead and create a sphere, and this is what we're going to go and emit from. So if we look at the sphere, it actually has quite a decent amount of divisions, 30 by 30, so we're going to leave it at that. What I will do is change the radius to something like 20, and this is going to be a much larger radius. We're going to do this for a couple of reasons. It's going to get us closer to a realistic scale, and when we begin to use the attributes inside of the particles and the properties, uh, they're not going to have uh, many decimal places over, like I'm going to have to use 3 or 4 or even 5 for this. I'll be using whole numbers or 1 to 2 decimal places. All right, so let's go ahead and create a particle emitter, and let's take a look at what we have. I'm going to collapse down so we hide the sphere and press play. Okay, so we can see that we have our particles being generated. Let's increase that emission rate to something like 350 and play. And then we can see that they're coming out, and we have this sort of trail-like effect, and that is because it is being emitted from the vertices or the points. So let's go ahead and change that to faces, and then we'll have a nice variation with that. So another thing we want to do is change the lifetime on this. Right now it's set to 10, so it's going to, they're going to live for 10 frames. Let's do something like 50. And we want to have a maximum lifetime range. We want a variation on the lifetime, so let's go 5 and 50. So some particles will die very young, and then some will live to the maximum lifetime, and then anywhere in between. And that looks pretty good. So let me just jump to my project settings and increase the timeline to 200 and back to the emitter. Okay, so now if we look at our particles, they're already blasting out in every direction, and we want to have control over this. We don't want this to happen, and this is being driven by the velocity. So let's kill the velocity to zero, and now we can see that, that they are living on the sphere. So now we can control uh, the movement of the particles, and we're going to be creating a, a particle direction force. And when we add that, from here, we'll be able to control the direction. So let's go ahead and increase the strength on this, and if we put it to one, let's see what we get. Uh, so we get the particles going in the right direction, but they're really fast, so we want to change that. So instead of 1, let's go to point 0.1, and let's go ahead and hit play. And that's much better, but still too fast. We want to have a heavier or denser smoke. So let's do something like 0, 0.5, and hit play. And that feels uh, much better. We can always play with this number after, but this is feeling pretty good right now. So another thing we want to do is we can see we have uh, the emission is very straight as they go up. We want to introduce some noise to our particles. We want to make a turbulence node in here, so particle turbulence. Uh, we don't need to deal with the region. We want it to affect the entire simulation. So let's deal with the strength here. So let's pump it up to 111. And if we go and look at what that gives us, we can see that uh, it's a little too wild. So if we take a clue from our directional force, we moved over two decimal places. I'm going to do the same thing here. So let's go to, say, 0.0. 5.05.05 .05 and then now let's go ahead and play back so much nicer we can see that we have the sub noise inside of here they're wiggling around but let's go and just decrease that maybe five two three and play through and that's on the y value and this is nice this feels uh, much more like smoke so let's go ahead and keep that okay so now this is about as much as we can do with the particle simulation until we start getting into the size range. And if we look at our particles, you can see that they're blank right now, right? There's no nothing mapped to them. And I want to add an image sprite to this. So we could make a noise and add a roto shape to it, and maybe a small 5 by 15, uh, 512 by 512. And then we could use that as an input. So that's an option. But I have some sprites prepared. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag in a couple of images here. And I made these very quickly in a painting program, just one paint stroke using a smoke brush and then saving it out. So let's go ahead and plug this into our particle input and then look through it. And now we can see that we have uh, our images mapped to there. Uh, they are lacking an alpha channel here, or that single image is lacking an alpha channel. So let's add a shuffle, and now we can see it's cleared up. And let's just shuffle uh, the blue into the alpha for good measure there. And now we can begin to use the size. So let's increase the size, and now we can see them much larger. And I want to get these actually quite big. Now, when I increase the size, we can see we have this white uh, blobby mess, and that's because of the way that the particles are being blended on top of each other, and we need to actually modulate them. So what we'll do is we'll create a blend mat, and from here, we're going to change the surface blend from input fragment to modulate. And now we have a nice uh, blending value set to over, and they're being modulated. 
Okay, so let's back to our particle emitter. Let's make these size. Let's just jump right up to 15, and they're much larger now. And we're really going to see the change in here when we adjust the size range. So let's add the size range a 10, and then now that's looking a lot like smoke. So we can go ahead and play through, and we have this nice smoky column. Now let's examine our simulation. If we pull out, we have to adjust a couple of things. Uh, number one, they're living to that full range of 50, which is okay, but maybe a little too tall. We want them to maybe uh, fade out a little earlier. We can do that using the life time, but I want to approach this in a different way. And another thing is they're all very even here, so we can see that it's all the same color. And then lastly, if we look at this, uh, when they're born, they pop in. And then when they're dying, they're also popping out. And we don't want that. We want them to fade. And you can see that popping happening uh, everywhere throughout the simulation. So we can control all this with one node. And we're going to use the particle curve node for this. So let's go ahead and create that. And how this works is essentially it's going to let us control quite a few things. We can do the size and the mass over the lifetime. But first, let's deal with the color. So let's go ahead and we're going to grab the RGB. And what this is showing us is there's two points, right? This is when the particles are born, and this is when the particles die. So when they're born, they're going to have an RGB value of 1, and at the end of their lifetime, also 1. So what we're going to do is grab that end of life and bring it down. And then let's also uh, pull it in. So let's go maybe around here. And then now we have a much different look. We can see here uh, that if we play through, we have that uh, as they're born, uh, they're at that one value. And then as they e reach the end of life, they'll change color until it finally reaches that low value. And we can see, you know, we had that variance in the lifetime. And you can see the particles that are living for a much shorter time have already reached that dark color. And this really helps us break up uh, the color of our simulation. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is deal with that popping in and popping out as they uh, each reach the end of the lifetime. So let's jump over to the alpha. So same thing with the alpha channel. We have these two points, right, as they are born and as they die, and they have a value of 1. So what we want to do is introduce a new uh, point in here. So I'm going to hold down Control-Alt, and in the middle of their life, I'll add a point. So let's grab the beginning and the end of life, and then let's pull that down to 0, and let's smooth that curve out. So now as we play through, uh, they're no longer popping in. And then as they die, they're no longer popping out. We don't see any pops happening throughout our simulation. So that's exactly what we're looking for. But since we've changed the alpha channel, let's go back to the RGB. And let's grab the end. And let's hit H and smooth out that curve. And then also let's maybe just make an adjustment to it. Let's zoom in. And we're going to bring this down, make this darker, and maybe pull this in even further. And maybe even a bit darker like this. All right, so now let's take a look. We have this nice change in overall here so that we have the smooth entry, uh, the smooth exit as they uh, run out of life. And we have the nice variation in color, so brighter when they're born and then darker as they uh, go on in time. Okay, now looking at this, we do need to make a change. Uh, it, it depends on where this is going to be sitting in camera, but right now uh, we're only using one image, and uh, I can start to see a pattern with that single image that we have in here. So what we want to do is go and add that second image. So let's go ahead and pull this over here. I'm going to copy these two nodes, and we're going to paste it alongside here. And then we have another input. We can plug as many particles inside of here. Now, we could be using an image sequence for these particles and plugging in uh, actual one particle. But the thing is, I want control over the individual particles. And we'll see why in a second here. Now, let's go ahead and uh, right away, it looks very different. If we play through, we can see it's nice. Now, it's really broken up. I don't see any pattern with this. And it's looking pretty good. But now another thing we're going to need to change is that they're all going up and there's no rotation on a per particle level. So we want to change that. Now we're not going to use the particle of the rotation velocity inside the emitter that's reserved for geometry. So we're going to do this on an image basis. So let's grab our first image, take a look at it. We're going to create a transform. And from here, let's go and the rotate and let's add an expression. We're going to do frame and we're going to multiply it. Uh, I have cap locks on there. Let's just go frame and we're going to multiply it, uh, let's say, by... 3. So we're multiplying it at frame 100. The value is now 300. And as we play, it'll automatically rotate for us. OK, now let's add a crop after this for control that bounding box. And then let's also do the same thing uh, for this other node. Uh, and so let's grab a transform. And again, we're going to add an expression. And let's do frame and multiply. This time, let's go the other direction. So let's do it by minus 5. So 
uh, let's add this in one viewer and in the other. So we have this one image that is rotating in this direction at that speed. And then if we grab our look at our other one, we have it. It's rotating in the opposite direction and quicker. All right, so let's just copy and paste that crop over here and clean that up. So now let's go ahead and look at what we have. If we look at our, our last node and we hit play, uh, the particles will begin to generate. Uh, there they are. Now, because we are introducing a rotation and an expression on every single frame, uh, the particles are resolving. And that's what we're seeing uh, with the image sprites here. So as soon as that's worked out, uh, we won't see that anymore. And it looks quite good now. If we look here, we can see that they are rotating as they're going up and we have a nice variance uh, between uh, these two particle inputs and we can see that rotation happening. Now uh, a nice thing that we can do is if we are committed to the rotation, if we're still working things out, maybe we wouldn't do this, but if we're committed to the rotation that we have here, we can go ahead and bake down this expression. So let's right click on the rotate and then go to edit and generate and let's say OK. And let's do the same thing for the other rotation. So I'm going to right click, edit, and generate, and then say OK. And so now we bake that expression into a curve, and we can see that over here. OK, so now we have a nice simulation going on. Uh, the particles are looking quite good. But I think what we can do is maybe add an overall rotation to everything inside of here. So let's do that. We're going to pull down our particle curve, and let's make a vortex, particle vortex node. And we're going to be doing this uh, on the tangential uh, direction. Now, uh, maybe the radial as well, but let's see how that works out. So let's go ahead and hit 1 first, and then let's go and see what our simulation looks like. Okay, so we have it uh, that looks like the right axis in the right direction, except uh, it's a pretty cool effect, but this is not what we're going for right now. So what we're going to do is just decrease that. So let's go to point 0.1 and hit play. And uh, that's much better, but let's tighten this up even further. So what we'll do is we're going to have to go to that second decimal and 0, 1. So now let's hit play and take a look. And we can see that overall rotation to the entire column uh, as it's going up. Plus, we have that per particle rotation going on. So this is exactly where we want to be. And this is looking quite good. All right. So I think from here, we've built out an asset quite nicely uh, and quite quickly. And we have this nice variance and um, no specific pattern to our actual smoke. So this looks like something that we can be using as an asset. We can be flying around it in a 3D space as well. Now, a nice thing that we can do with this, we can use it as a base and build other smokes off of it. I'll just show you uh, very quickly. If we just decrease the actual emission rate, and let's say instead of 350, we go down to, say, 30, uh, we're going to have a much lighter particle uh, simulation. Not only that, they'll feel lighter, and we'll see that as they move out. And this means that we can make a quick change to this. If we were to go and change the particle curve uh, and have it turn darker much later on, uh, then it would feel like a lighter, wispier smoke instead of a heavier smoke. So right off the gate, we can go and change maybe the amount of rows and columns that we have, make some adjustments to the directional force and turbulence, as well as the particle curve, and we can have another asset uh, built off of this one. Uh, so that about wraps it up, and I uh, hope you enjoyed this workflow.